appreciate the discourse. Pastor, not Reverend, right? Pastor, yes. I appreciate the discourse. I think that's very useful in uh, exchanging ideas, and I think we're going in a, a good direction that way, rather than talking through the media and, and everybody yelling and screaming. So I appreciate that uh, quite little question and answer thing. Um, one of my main concerns coming here tonight is I. Two weeks ago, I came and I told you there's tensions in the street. I, I minister, I, I'm in, you know, ministering to a lot of people on a daily basis, hourly basis, so I have the pulse of what's going on, and I hear about a lot of things that you might not hear about. So that's why I want to make it clear that this is, there is an urgent situation in front of us, and the criminalization laws are not helping the homeless at all. And the facts are, when you criminalize the homeless, and you just rotate them through the jail, they end up like a mad uh, Mr. Cox, or it's just they're coming in and out of jail mad, and it's harder for us in the ministerial position to help them and to get them back on their feet. So I would ask you to just, let's, like Reverend Gale said, let's start over again, uh, repeal those laws to begin with. Well, I guess you know. Respectfully, yeah. we talk, we're not starting over. We okay. need to, take, to you know, tweak this yeah. law, we'll tweak this law, yeah. we're doing it here. Well, those, no, those, nobody's suggesting yeah. we start over. We're not. So. Okay. Well, those, those. Just to let you know, when we're sending them through the jail, uh, there's a report with the um, sent to the United Nations from the U.S. It says criminalization prolongs homelessness, creates a correctional system to homelessness cycle with astronomical cost to government. Criminalization also misdirects state resources away from more cost-effective, short and long-term solutions such as transitional housing and permanent supportive housing and affordable housing, all which are likely to reduce the number of people living on the streets. Thus, policies in many parts of the U.S. increase homelessness and exposure to cruel and human degrading conditions rather than working to reduce them. Those are the facts. So I'm just coming to you with facts. If you want to reduce homelessness, we should get on board with the things that are going to help lift people up, help the ministries, and help people so we, we don't have a guy with 17 trespassing tickets so we have to get him into a job or get him into our apartment. Same question for you. Where, yes, sir. Where's your church located? We're right here on 5th Avenue and 2nd Street. And you do uh, readings there on a daily basis? We do them every Sunday. So once a week? Once a week, yes. And, and are you part of a bigger network? We're in the Hope South Florida network. Uh, we don't receive any support from them, but we're on their webpage as one of their hosts. Actually, Craig's church comes once a month to help us, and we get various other churches that come there to that central place to help us, and it's... Um, what is the name of your church? Fifth Avenue Church. But is it a, any specific denomination? Uh, we're working with the, the Church of God, Bishop Green. They do a service in the morning. We do it in the evening. We work together. There is a whole combination of churches that work out of that area. Um, Mark's Church work, is right directly behind us. There's three churches. Yeah. 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 So they have people on... Tuesdays, Mondays. So we are we all help each other. Well, food's an issue. We all don't have a lot of money. A lot of these churches don't have the money, so people pitch in to supply meals, and we have we have churches coming in to to help us with the food. What's happened since the feeding ban? Initially, when you started it, we were overrun with people, and it was a finance issue for us because now we're getting double the amount of people. It's kind of calmed down a little bit. We like food, not bombs, because they help. The overflow people, and like Mark was saying, not everybody fits into the herd where they can come at the exact time when the church is feeding. We run into a lot of people that they have part-time jobs or below the poverty level, and they can't afford an apartment, and they're trying to save their money to get into an apartment. So the feeding, if they can catch a meal and get to work, and they're working, a lot of them are working in these downtown buildings up down, and they, they come out, and they they can't afford the the truck. So somebody hands them a peanut butter and jelly. Food, not bombs, is there to give them food. They they can't get to the Hope South Florida bus to be to be transferred to a church, sit down for an hour, and then come back because they work at night. A lot of a lot of jobs are in the hotels and the in the service business. So that's the people we run into, and they're hungry, and you're meeting them in the street. They're not the people you typically see. A lot of the homeless people don't want to be known that they're homeless. And it's not like this, you know, sometimes I think there's a stigma where you see the guys just laying there drunk, not moving, and they're an eyesore. But there's a whole population of people that we're, gonna, we're finding are going to end up going into chronic homelessness. We're not able to catch them because they're coming out with trespassing tickets. They're tired because they're trying to get to work the next day and, and the police have a, a mandate to get them out of downtown. 
So they're pushing them out to the outskirts, they're not getting a good night's sleep, and then they're tense, they're, and then we start having more interactions with police. The more, inter the more laws there are, the more trespassing signs, and the more the less bathrooms, there's a more chance they're going to have an interaction with a policeman. The thing that happened with this policeman, it looked to me like this was just a powder keg situation. This is, he's dealing with hundreds just of people. Yeah, just, yeah. so. just to give you an idea what we're, why we come here week after week so we can connect now, with you. Dean had been yeah. at the last Continuum of Care meeting. He brought up some ideas, and the county didn't want to help fund some of the city's proposals. Well, I, I, got, I kind of got in the middle of that, and I, I tend to get into it more. Um, I, I believe... I have to get on the county of the well, uh, course. You guys aren't under, hold on a second, you guys aren't under any sunshine law, right? Well, we are on the same board. Yeah. But this is a publicly noticed meeting. Yeah, so, all right, no, I think we, um, I, we got a little sidetracked because the city of Hollywood was closing down a shelter and the people were going to end up coming here. The city wasn't closing it down. Well, they bought the place. They, they bought the They wanted them out. So there's 250 people that were housed there. They're not going to be housed there anymore. So it's creating more of a problem. And they were saying, you know, they want, so the problem is, when there's a high poverty level in a city, there's going to be homegrown homeless people all the time, as you're getting one person out, so we have to do things to get the poverty level down. Florida has a higher than national average, Florida average, and the rest of the cities around us, so that's a problem that we have, is the poverty. We also have a lot of money, which is a good issue. We have Millionaire's Row, we have yachts, we have Los Olas, we have tourists. It's a good thing, but we have to help. We have to do. I know you said you do a lot for the homeless. I appreciate that, but we have to do more we, because we are the central place here, and we have a dynamic that is not the same as all the other counties. Their motivation is they want to see us doing getting rid of the criminalization laws. Every single person on that board wants the criminalization because they read the same facts. We get these notices. We have binders and books with facts. We're doing things that are going against the facts. Well, so that, that won't, without yeah. getting into disclosing right. the sunshine law issues, I've talked to a number of members of that board yeah. that have no problems. Well, I mean, uh, that's the, the general, like, the police department was there, and they said criminalization, or you can't arrest your way out of the problem. It's never going to work. I, I think the involved. individual running the BSO plan used to run Fort Lauderdale, right? Yeah, Kevin Scott Russell, if he was there from BSO, used to yeah. be our homeless uh, outreach officer when we started in. But my question is, and I keep getting back to this, and I'm hearing you, I'm listening to the flow of all this, and... Yeah, maybe criminalization does, but it's not a criminalization of the homeless, it's a criminalization of certain types of behavior. And I, I still subscribe, but my issue there is, and I think that's what I think Jack was trying to get to, and, and, and Dean talked to us about it today, and, and I mentioned this before, the county needs to step up to the plate to help us out. We cannot afford, as one, age, one municipality, to end this problem by ourselves. Romney touched on it with the issues with the churches working together, and, and it's good dialogue we've had here earlier tonight. But the county, when I think in the continuum of care, we keep talking about like Miami Dade has a has a tax assessed to be able to address the issues related to homeless issues, whether it's feeding or whether it's housing. Broward County needs to do the same thing. So if you get if you're working with the continuum of care and you get our organiz other organizations that go there to the county, I'm there with you. I think every one of us is there with you to get that type right. of support to get done. Well, it's going to be a for process. That, excuse me, I'm sorry, a process. process. But yeah. for them to say and just deal with the criminalization issue. Okay. They're, but they're not they're saying, saying that to us. They, they're not telling us that. They say that even if they did say that, the fact remains the social service care that needs to be funded, they need to take responsibility for. Yeah, I, I agree with and you. We have, problem. we have a problem that's it's, that a problem. Yeah, it's it's right. disconnected. And that's what right. I think and a lot of this is disconnected. Pastor Sims brought up something. That, you know, and we've all talked about this. I mean, here, here's the issue. You get arrested for being homeless, uh, and committing a crime anywhere in Broward County, and they bring you and they release you down here. So we are not only dealing with the homeless population of Fort Lauderdale, we're dealing with the homeless population throughout Broward County in 30-some municipalities. They all get arrested, they get brought downtown, they get released downtown, downtown Fort Lauderdale. So now, for the county to say this is not the county, our yeah. issue, yeah. when we are basically receiving every arrest and every release, they don't release them back in Parkland, where they were arrested. They don't release them back in Weston, where they were arrested. They don't take them back to Miramar, where they were arrested. They release them down here at the river. And as Pastor said, they'll walk across the river, and the first thing they see is straight in. This is where I think we need help from the churches. That's why we are doing what we're doing, because 
and we need help from the county, more so than the churches. Yes. Because the county ought to be taking, where, where the system used to be, you had three different jail facilities, and not everybody was brought down to. So a release out of the Pompano, the North Satellite Jail, or the South Satellite Jail, resulted in them being in another community. So, I, I mean, I appreciate this dialogue tonight, but when the county's ready to step up, and I was delighted to see you at the continuum of care, the county's ready to step up and say, look, we recognize we need to help fund this because all of the arrests are now being released at downtown Fort Lauderdale. We can have a much better discussion. All right, best case scenario is they get their funding from HUD and we start that program. But what, well, what I'm worried about... $21 million dollars right, right now. But what I'm worried about is, I'm worried about today, there's suffering going on. There's problems with people racking up trespassing charges, racking up all these but, but young guys. trespassing, they're trespassing. Well, I talked to Pastor Green, uh, Bishop Green. He said, Frank, I'm really worried about the young guys that are coming through the church and they're getting put into the, the criminal system. And for well, the they should do criminal conduct. Well, they're, they're, if they're homeless, they're home, they don't have a place to sleep on private property. They don't have private property. Now they can't be on public property, so they have nowhere to go. And they don't sleep, and then they get tired, and then and then they're they're they're, they're it's causing them to fall into the into the criminal into the chronic homeless situation we, we at need a more young housing, age. We need more housing. We well, need. I agree, but if we if we stop the criminalization part of it, okay, and then we work with the, the business community, for instance. There's places in Denver where they have a pizza restaurant with housing on top of it, and the people on the housing on the top supply the labor to the pizza restaurant below. We need some creative things to bridge the gap between the county and HUD because that's going to move slow. We think at the continuum of care, the county can really get creative. Well, I think the continuum of care is going to deal with HUD, tax money. It's going to be a slower process. But in Fort Lauderdale, we have a lot of resources. Two lady, a lady and a man sat right here. They had some good solutions for business and and incorporating. They have a lot of ideas. I know, but look at Hope South Florida. Look at the I mean, there's a bunch of businessmen there that have also teamed up with Hope South Florida with some right. very Well, we, we have a lot of things going on, okay, and I'm not saying it, but we need your help because you have a lot of connections just to set the dialogue in a different way that the homeless are not some outcast that, that, that we're going to belong in jail. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of, of um, tension in the city, and a lot of people, don't, they don't Right. They just I believe the going. county can help yeah. relieve that. They, I agree with you. And I also Sir, believe, yeah. listen, I, my, I don't have any desire to put anybody in jail. That's right. not right. my goal. It's never been my goal. But we have to come up with a better way of addressing this. Right. Well, that's so what let I'm me saying. do this. Yeah. we got yeah. two more items after right. this. Mr. King? Thank you.